Hi all, welcome to Force Galaxy. Hope you are doing good. So today in this video, I will be discussing few queries which were shared by you. Okay, so these are the query which are shared in past two days. Okay, and uh, one more thing, let me remind you again. Please do not wait for me to respond you over the mails. Uh, I have already shared the link where you can schedule your interviews and share your queries. Okay, so today also I have shared the link in the comment section. You can get it from there and schedule your interviews and if you have any queries you can directly share over there okay and these all queries are also shared there only okay and for me also it is easy to collect all the queries okay so because that is the separate platform and there everything is a very handy so for me also it is very easy to collect everything but over the mail so it is bit difficult for me also to sort out the mails which are related to the queries and which are related to the interviews and also it is better to try to use this link okay and okay, so let's start with the video and we have very first question is how the execute method processes the batch of 200 records is it parallel processing or it is a serialized processing okay yeah so as we all know that uh, in our batch apex the records are processed in number of batches like we have 400 records and the batch size we have defined is 200 so here two batches will be created with a uh, records of 200 and 200 okay so when we execute our this batch so two batch will be created in this case okay now the first batch will be executed first now after this is completed now the second batch will comes and it will start processing okay so it is not they are not executing parallelly they are executing one after and another okay so you must have also seen when you run your batch and then if you go back to the job apex so there you will see that the your class name batch apex name will be there and it will show you the total number of batches which are created or we can say chunks okay the total number of chunks which are created and there are the two columns either the if the batches fail it will show you the count over the fails column and if the batch is processed successfully it will show you under this completed one okay so, so it will be civilized processing not the parallel processing okay so the next question is if we have test dot start test and test dot stop test in our test classes okay will there be any error while deploying them to production considering the governor limits okay so as we all know that why we use this test dot start test and test dot stop test this is just to reset the governor limits okay so whatever the code will be inside these two test dot start test and test dot stop test it, so it will going to reset the governor limits the for the code which is inside this okay so it is always better to use these two functions okay because it will help you from the exception and you can do your dmls or whether it's a calling of class or anything inside these two functions only okay so it will not going to dip, uh, give you any error while deploying but it will help you out in avoiding the errors okay the next question is how can we retry failed records in same batch class okay that is we need to retry only failed records three times okay okay so uh, okay let's suppose uh, you have a batch class and uh, after executing this batch you got some error in few of the records and now you want to run your batch again so uh, for only the records which are failed okay so now and you want to do this thing only three times okay right if i am not wrong so this was your question so okay so you must have heard about the database dot stateful so this is required for you to count all the number of records which are not processed or which are failed okay and also uh, side by side collect all the ids okay. of the records which are failed okay and one more thing we need to get here is the uh, variable where we can count the execution of this batch class okay so you can use this count variable inside the constructor also okay so now what you will do first time when your batch will execute so at this time count will be zero okay and now when you come to the uh, execution part so here you can collect using this data using this database dot stateful you can collect all number of records which are failed and all the ids okay so in a list you can collect all these things okay now next in your finish method 
you have to add the check here okay the check should be that your count is less than three okay because we only want to execute our batch three times for the failed records and currently our count is zero okay so you will going to apply the check that the count should be less than zero and again call this batch okay and in the parameter you can pass the ids or the number of records which are failed or which are not processed okay now after again when this batch is called and now also in the parameter also pass the count value value okay and this time the count value will be plus one okay so first time it is executed now next when your batch is called again you have value count value is there and the failed records are there with you now again processing will be done on these records only okay so in at the end in the finish method make uh, your counter will be plus one here and the check will be already there that is less than three so uh, in this uh, so in this way it will be executed three times and you will be able to process failed records again and again up to the count value okay so i think this will work so if not then let me know well, uh, I will try to do from my end. Okay, so I think this should be the solution for this question. Okay, and if you have, uh, and if you guys know any other way we can do this, so do let me know. So, or you can share your approach in the comment section so other can also get to know. Okay, so the next question will be here. I want to know about relationship about all the objects. Okay. So relationship in Salesforce or the relationship of all the objects. So, so let's. So if you want to know about the relationships in the Salesforce, then you can uh, check out this video. Okay. So link I have provided the link in the comment section. Okay. So you can check out. Uh, so here you can get to know what are the different relationship we have. Okay. And if you want to know the relationship of different objects, then you can use the schema builder tool. So in the Salesforce, we have a schema builder tool. Okay, you can go there and it will show you a UI where uh, you, you have to select the records uh, of which you want to see the relationships. Okay, so you can select all or anything uh, or any required objects you want to see. And it will show you a diagram where it will show you the relationships, number of fields and everything and their type on the diagram. Okay, so you can use the schema builder to, shape, uh, to, uh, check, the relationship, uh, to check the relationships of the objects. Okay. okay, so the next question is in Salesforce with sharing how we define with class objects, fields, record levels and also in SOQL. Okay. So if you want to run your class within the given permission, so you can use the with sharing keyword for the classes. Okay. So using this, all the which uh, record level access will be applied. Okay. Now next for the objects and the field, you can use the schema functions. Okay. So that is the object is accessible or not, whether this field is accessible or whether this field has readable access or not for this particular user. So you can use all these things for the uh, objects and the fields. Okay, so next in the SQL query. Okay, so if you want to apply the securities over your SQL, so then you have to use a clause that is with security and for. So as you can see in the diagram. So this is how we have to add this to our SQL queries. Now all the field level and the uh, object level permissions will be applied here for all the records. Okay. Okay. And the next question come is about the uh, jobs for the Salesforce freshers and how we can uh, prepare ourselves for the interviews and all. So this is a very common topic and in every video uh, I can see this comment that how we can prepare as a fresher for the Salesforce interview and what we, from where we should learn and all. So by this week I will share the separate video on this question and try to share all the information with you from where you can learn or from where uh, or how, what is needed you are applying for a Salesforce job as a fresher okay. So surely I will cover this topic in my coming video. So these are the few questions which I have discussed. And if you have any questions in this, please let me know in the comment section. Okay. And we'll meet you soon in the next video. Till then, take care. Goodbye.